down here in the corner. I wanted to just run you through a little bit of the Summer Stories website. This is what we're doing for summer reading this year because the idea is we have no idea what's going to happen next <laughs> next fall. So we want to sort of keep summer reading as something that's helpful to you and something that's not too difficult to keep track of. Ms. Wozniak, mostly, with some, I did some help, uh, built this beautiful website, Summer Stories, and here it is. Now, if you are like Fecto, I'm gonna give you 15 more seconds to get my interest, and then I'm out of here. I just wanna show you this. This is the Streamline Choices link. Click on this link, and here's the Streamline Summer Stories choice, choice board. Um, these are things that you can do for summer stories. The idea behind this is that we want you to be listening to stories. Clearly, we need to be listening to other people and what they're going through. And so a great way to do that is through reading, but also through listening, also through face-to-face -face interactions. So you can try a book for yourself or read to someone else, read comics or poetry, listen to a podcast. Those are ways of getting stories, of bringing them into you. And then ways of pushing stories out. You can tell or write your own story. You can create art or comics. You can share stories from the past, give stories to the future, tell your stories to somebody else. If you don't like a ton of choices, there's this. But if you go to the regular website, there's here's a little video of uh, Ms. Wozniak and Megan Carrison from the Public Library and me talking about summer stories. And then these are ways to get your stories. And if you click on these, all of these have a different set of resources. If you're the sort of person who's like, you know what, I just want a summer reading list like we used to have, you can click on try a book. And you have to go way down here to check out these suggestions. And the suggestions are basically summer reading lists. So there's um, stuff for the middle. If you like middle school stuff, there's books that uh, talk about racism. And then these are the books that I was looking at for summer reading this year. And then we ended up just not doing a specific list. But I've read most of these books and I liked them a lot. I also did some videos. If you go to the Beverly High School YouTube channel, uh, if you go here and look at the videos, there's a bunch of different um, reading uh, book things down here. You can look at those. That was back when I thought we were going to be really doing a traditional summer reading. And so I was trying to do some stuff for the juniors. But there are some book talks there if you like it. And I may do some more over the summer. So keep an eye on the, the high school library channel. So, so there's books. There's that. But there are also read storybooks to the little kids in your life or the old people or your pets. Graphic novels are always a great option. There are short stories, poetry, you can listen to podcasts, you can have, listen to stories from people that you meet on the street. Digital stories, this is really cool. I've started to take an interest in these. Digital stories are, it's like a new newspaper story that's then like they add all this extra stuff to. And so these are very cool. There's a lot of really interesting things that not just written, but also have video components and interactive components. They're pretty cool. And then the last thing was nonfiction and news stories. You know, just read the paper. And then to connect, create, and share stories, this is how you interact with your story. You can share it with other people. You can join a book club. You can write or tell a story. Create art. We've been doing that for years and years with summer reading. Do it for summer stories. You can create a video, create a song or poem. You can, again, stories from the past. Talk to older people that you know and find out what their lives were like. Stories for the future. I just want to show you that all of these different places, you can click on any of these and they are all looking for people's stories about COVID-19. So you go in here and it gives you options for how to tell your story of what your plague year has been like. And then uh, collaborate and talk. Ms. Wozniak is putting up Padlets and I'm putting up Flipgrids and we're sharing. So if you prefer to use Padlet, even though you're not a middle schooler, you feel free. If you um, want to use Flipgrid, however you want to share a story, you're welcome to do that. And we're constantly upgrading this, so feel free to come back. So you have lots of options. How is how is this going to be graded? Probably not going to be graded. You don't, you're, you're not going to have to prove that you did it. Ninth graders, incoming ninth graders, uh, this is going to be something that you discuss. And you may discuss it in your English class. It's unlikely that it's going to have any impact on your grading process, but what it will have an impact on is your life. It's really important to listen to other people. There's a saying that a person who has read a thousand books has lived a thousand lives. 
but it's not just books. Anytime you're listening to someone else's experience, it enriches your own life. So do this to enrich your life. And really, it's just things you're going to be doing anyway. It's just that you're paying closer attention because you're thinking of it in an academic context. Enjoy. Enjoy summer stories. That's what we want you to do. I hope you have a great summer, and I'll see you in the fall.